Welcome to Messing with Madden Episode 2! Or at least the preview video of it. So, once again, we are here to mess with our good friends, the Cleveland Browns. But this time, we're going to do things a little bit differently. So, the Browns are notorious for being really, really bad at managing their players correctly. I could go on and on and on about some of, about some of the... Uh, unintelligent things that they have done in terms of managing their players in the past, but I know most of you aren't football fans, so <laughs> I suppose I should keep that brief. In 1984, Cleveland selected Ernest Biner in a rather late draft pick, in fact it was the 10th round, but he ended up surprising the Browns by being a very effective running back, and managed to get them, with obviously some help from the rest of the team, to back-to-back -back AFC Championship games in 86 and 87, and in 1987, after the Denver Broncos had jumped out to a huge lead, it was Biner who pretty much single-handedly made them come back. And then, he had the fumble. After fumbling the ball on the Broncos' two-yard line, any hope for the comeback was immediately dashed. The Browns would release Ernest Biner the following season, and then he would become a Washington Redskin. And then as a Washington Redskin, what do you think happened? He won a Super Bowl. You could actually pretty much say the same thing for their star quarterback at the time, Bernie Kosar. They traded him to the Dallas Cowboys, who also won a Super Bowl with his help. During the 1995 offseason, the Browns' owner, the evil Art Modell, literally broke the bank in order to sign Andre Risen as a wide receiver, who did not have the best of times in Cleveland. The next season, the Browns had moved to Baltimore. Also by the end of the next season, Andre Risen was not with the brand new Baltimore Ravens, he'd been traded to the Packers. Where, guess what? He helped them win a Super Bowl! In the early part of the 2000s, Jeff Garcia was one of the better quarterbacks in the NFL. Not the best, but certainly pretty good, and he was playing for the San Francisco 49ers at the time. In 2004, the Browns signed him, hoping that he would fix the situation at quarterback that had been going on ever since they were reborn in 1999. However, because he was surrounded by a horrible team, he only managed to get in 10 games, which is not even a full season, by the way, with the Browns before they just pulled the plug immediately, not even giving him a chance or giving the rest of the team a chance to catch up and work around him. This time, he didn't go on to win a Super Bowl, but he did take two different teams to the playoffs, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, before retiring. And possibly the most recent really stupid thing the Browns have done was that in 2012, they drafted Trent Richardson very early on, and immediately he showed some productivity, basically becoming the only really good player on their entire offense. Regardless, about a year and a half later, they traded him to Indianapolis. But this time the story's got a twist. This time he didn't do so well in Indianapolis, and they got a first round draft pick in return, so wait a minute, maybe they actually were onto something this time. He wasn't that good of a player, they got a first round draft pick, let's see what they did with- Oh, come on, guys. Johnny Manziel. <sighs> the Cleveland Browns. Even when we're not as stupid as we look, we're still stupid. Okay, okay, sorry for the long history lesson, we're going back to the game now, okay? Whatever the case, the idea here in this in this version of the game is to rather have some kind of a parody of what's actually been going on with the Browns. Because what I have done is I have changed every single member of the Browns, and I have edited all of their ratings such that they're really good athletes, but none of them are in... are. are skilled in the positions that they have been assigned to. For instance, let's take uh, running back James Davis here. So, he's an excellent tackler. He's 
not that good at catching or carrying, which is really important for a running back, or jumping. But also, take a look. He's a perfect thrower, a perfect a, a perfect accurate, accurate thrower, uh, and also a perfect kicker, which are things that no running back ever would ever need. Now, another thing that I want to point out that I've done here is I've left the first page of every single one of these guys completely alone except for awareness. This is crucial. I've made every single player on the Browns a 99 out of 99 awareness because we need that for the narrative. And that narrative is, I want to see if somehow buried within this game's artificial intelligence, these guys can find a way to actually become aware of what they are actually good at and rebel against the positions that they've been set in so that they actually become a better team. My hypothesis for how this game is going to work out is that it's going to start out horrible. I'm going to set them against a completely normal, unedited team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Completely and utterly unedited. And my hypothesis is that the first half, or some of the first quarter, is going to be all Tampa Bay because the Browns are good athletes, but they're all terrible in their assigned positions. But maybe as the game goes along, the Browns start to adapt a little bit better, and they start to learn how better to manage themselves as a team. I'm not expecting the Browns to win, but at the, at the very least, they should score a few points by the end of it. At least, I think so. I've not tested this at all. One of the more interesting individual cases that I've come across when editing these guys is the case of John St. Clair here. See, see uh, certain positions require less to uh, be good. Like, for instance, this guy's a right tackle. He's an offensive lineman. So, like, look at all those. He's 99 out of 99 in all these categories that right tackles don't actually need. And he's 99 awareness. 99 throwing, all that. But he's 37 in pass blocking and 37 in run blocking, which besides, being, which besides awareness and toughness are the only things that you really need to be a right tackle, according to Madden. Even though these guys are 37 and he's 99 and everything else, his overall rating is 31. I don't understand that. I mean, like, the things that matter, he's 37 in and he's boosted by a 99 awareness, but the game thinks that he's actually worse than 37. I, I don't get it, but we'll see how that manifests itself in the, in the gameplay. Another interesting thing that I'd like to point out is that the cornerbacks, interestingly enough, despite me editing them, they're all still pretty good. Especially Sheldon Brown at 75, but uh, let's let, let's go quick, let's go yeah let's go check out him. So Brown, of course, I've pointed out as 99 awareness like everybody else. He also has really good speed. Remember, I did not edit any of the speed, but like cornerbacks, just by default, if you want to be a cornerback, you need to be fast. You need to have good acceleration. You need to be agile. So like he's not he's not very good at catching, which you're supposed to be good at catching if you're a cornerback because those are the best positions to intercept the ball. He's not that great at jumping. He can break tackles, but that doesn't really affect the overall rating. But he can't tackle very well, which is also important if you're if you're going to be anybody on defense. And yet, still, he's 75. So, according to this game, really all you need to do to be to be a cornerback is be fast and be extremely aware of what you're doing. It's kind of interesting. I'd also like to show that uh, Dave Zastadil, the punter. He's good at everything, throwing, catching, tackling, breaking tackles, blocking. He's a 46 in kicking power, a 33 in accuracy, and that comes out to 12. This game is not very nice to kickers, is it? And yes, I said kickers instead of punters, but the thing is, the kicker is the exact same thing. He's also a 12, he's been given almost the exact same attributes. 38 kicking power, 50 accuracy, and that's still only good for 12 overall. I don't understand why these things are so inflated like that, but yet, yeah, like, that's the thing. Some of these positions, if you're bad at one or two things, you are just useless. The cornerbacks are very different, obviously, because, because they're bad at a lot of things, and yet they're still rated very high, simply because they are quick and they are aware. So there's a nice little gap between what makes them good and bad. Okay, well now I've auto-saved and let's let's not actually do the game because this is the preview video. You're not supposed to do the game in a preview video, but let's 
go ahead and see now what it will look like. Okay, Buccaneers are the normal team over here, and the Browns are... Oh, heck. I'm not changing my hypothesis, though. Doesn't mean, <laughs> doesn't mean I'm not probably going to be wrong now that I see that, though. <laughs> oh, this is going to be awful.